Okay, now we're going to go over the roles and responsibilities that happen either before the proposal or during the proposal. I want to stress, though, that it might sound overwhelming, especially if you're a small business, and it's not meant to be. It's just a framework for what you should be doing at certain times. And it could be that many of these roles are held by the same person, but it doesn't matter. As long as they know they're in that role and they hold it and they do what they need to do, your proposal will go very well. So the first one is the capture manager. The capture manager has been tracking this proposal from the first time you saw it as an opportunity for your company. And the capture manager is in charge of doing a lot of different activities in order to shape the proposal and to prepare the company for bid. But once the actual proposal hits, that capture manager, his role diminishes a little bit. He becomes an advisor to the rest of the team and he makes sure that everything that he's done goes into the proposal and that the proposal is written effectively for that customer. The next role is the proposal manager. Now, he has a lot of back and forth with the capture manager because he has to pull all that information out of him. But basically, the proposal manager, it is his proposal. It is his product. He guides and leads and manages all the people below him, but it's his team. And why it's so important that he takes ownership of it Questions. Everyone's got questions. There's seven million ways to skin any cat. And so the proposal manager is the end all be all for making those decisions, setting the guidance, setting the schedule, setting um, how everyone's going to operate with each other. Basically, the proposal manager is kind of the god of the proposal. Now, you're not always, as a manager goes, you don't manage every single task. It's nice to have sort of that deputy or that proposal coordinator, right, Jeff? Right. And so the proposal coordinator often is the proposal manager. So don't get us wrong, these are sometimes combined, but if you can have someone separate from you that coordinates everything and helps keep the schedule moving forward, that allows the proposal manager to take a little bit more of a high level view and to focus more on the production of the proposal itself and less on the minutia of scheduling and coordinating and conducting meetings. Does that need to be a really senior person or can that person be like a junior person that needs to learn? Yeah, I think it's a perfect place for a junior person to learn how a proposal goes and to participate meaningfully and help you as well. The next role is your volume or your section lead, depending on how your particular RFP is written. Generally, there will be a couple of really big sections. Now, the importance of understanding the role of a volume lead is you are in charge of that volume if your writers aren't delivering, if there's a huge gap in information, if one of the teammates aren't giving you what you need. As the proposal manager, you want to make sure you have a volume lead set up to understand that it is his baby. It's his baby to get to the tech editor. It's his baby to get all of the right data into that document. Yeah, and a lot of times they call that volume lead the book boss because they are the boss. And proposal managers, if you don't think they're being the boss and really got it, you may want to find someone new because a poor volume lead or a volume manager can really derail your entire process. Now, those volume leads or book bosses, they have a bunch of writers in the case of a big proposal. They might have writers in different technical areas, management areas, leadership areas, depends on what the RFP is asking for. Those writers and SMEs, they're a role among themselves. And the reason you have to have specific discrete writers in areas is because usually proposals are too big for one person to write and it takes a lot of people with a lot of different technical knowledge to get the entire breadth of your proposal written. So those guys have day jobs. They're the ones that you're going to have to task. You're going to have to keep on them because honestly, usually the SMEs and the, the writers, well, they kind of care about their day job more than your proposal. On top of that, as many writers as you have is as many different ways of getting the information back that you asked for. So as a volume lead, you want to empower, you want to be empowered to say, this is what I'm looking for. I want these type of paragraphs. I want this type of information. Give me an example at the end. The more the communication goes back and forth, and actually the more you switch to the telephone or an in-person meeting, the faster you'll get to where you want to go. Absolutely. Now you've got a whole bunch of different people writing. You've got volume lead proposal manager adjusting their writing some, but the next role is a critical role. It's an unsung hero of the proposal process. It's the technical writer. And Kathy is our probably most gifted technical writer. What is it that a technical writer does? A technical writer makes 
All the different volumes and sections sing as if one person wrote it. Fix the grammar, make sure the acronyms, you use it the first time but not down below, like all of those rules are in place. They make the document the easy to read, easy to grade, easy to understand proposal that the graders are looking for. Sometimes that is all, they also do desktop publishing and that's just basically Microsoft Word ninja skills to make the document look good and be easy um, to kind of manage. But you might have to use that with like, two different people for that role if you've got a really good person on grammar, but they can't do Microsoft Word. Yeah. Now, here's another role that is probably the one role that you don't want to combine with anyone else in your proposal team. You actually want it to be a discrete other person, and that's the compliance lead. And the reason you want it to be a completely different person from your proposal team is it's your outline, outside view of your proposal that's going to look at your proposal to see, did you answer every question in the order? Did you follow all their formatting instructions? Do you have every piece of this proposal you're supposed to? Because non-compliance can mean your proposal gets thrown out before you even get to the competition. So that compliance lead, they're going to check to make sure that group thing doesn't happen and that everyone that in your proposal team might be missing something, they're the ones that are going to catch it. That's a great point. The, uh, the importance of a compliance lead cannot be overstated and their impartiality is huge. Or there's three more that are part of your company probably or maybe just the proposal manager has these particular roles as well depending on the size of your company. The first one is the cost lead. So you have to put together a cost volume. Those are usually very prescribed. The government gives you a spreadsheet with specific things to bid and that cost lead is going to use your government accounting your government approved accounting system or your accounting system to figure out your cost, you guys are going to figure out your cost. You're going to put that into a proposal that's completely separate from your technical proposal. The cost lead is going to deal with that particular part. And then two of the other sort of categories that aren't usually in small businesses but are definitely in larges are there's a subcontracts lead and they deal with any, all the teaming, all of your teammates that you have. There's there's a lot of sort of cats and dogs to wrangle, and there's a lot of legal stuff, so they kind of handle that for you. And then there's also contracts, and they're the ones that focus um, on that relationship between your company and the government. Now again, like Jeff said, a lot of these roles, if you're a four or five man company, then it's going to be a lot of roles for one or two people. But it's just sort of things to think about and wrap your brain around of the different perspectives that you should probably have for your proposal during the whole process. So, again, this is Trident Proposal Management, and I'm Jeff Everidge. And I'm Kathy Borkowski. Good luck on your next proposal.